This video is sponsored by Squarespace. The Dark Energy Spectroscopic Instrument, or DESI, has been mapping out the positions to all of the galaxies within 11 billion light years of Earth. This month, they released that map along with a bunch of science results from it. Almost too many research papers to talk about here and far too many to link below, but I'll link the main ones for you. Now, the main focus of DESI has always been to measure the change in the expansion rates of the universe with time. Now, because light travels at a set speed of around about 300,000 kilometers a second, it takes light time to get to us from distant galaxies. So we see those galaxies as they were billions of years ago in terms of like what shape they were and what their positions were. So when we make a map of the positions of galaxies, we're not just making a map of the positions in space, but also in time as well. And we can see how the space between galaxies changes as the universe is expanded. And we use that to track how the universe has changed over time, including what rate it's been expanding at. So many of you might have seen the video I put out last week on the Hubble tension or crisis in cosmology, which is all about measuring the current rate of expansion of the universe using something known as standard candles. Certain types of stars that always appear at the exact same brightness wherever they are, so from how bright they appear to us, you can work out how distant they are and how distant the galaxy that they're in is from us. But the DESI collaboration needed something that they could measure at any point in the universe's history, at any distance from Earth. Because eventually you can't resolve individual stars anymore because they're just too far away from us. So instead, the DESI collaboration used what's known as a standard ruler, something that's the same size everywhere. So from how big it then appears on the sky, you can work out how far away it is. You can't just use entire galaxies, unfortunately, because there's a huge variation in the sizes of galaxies. So what the DESI collaboration used was something known as baryonic acoustic oscillations, or BAO. So in this video, we're going to chat first about what are baryonic acoustic oscillations, second, why they are a standard ruler and how they can be used to calculate the expansion rate of the universe, third, what the DESI collaboration have found, and or whether or not this agrees with our current best model of the universe. Now, this change in the expansion rate over time was just one thing of many that the DESI collaboration looked at with their first year of data. So I'll link the DESI website down below if you want to read more about all the other results that they found in this month's public data release. Now, websites like this are all written in HTML and JavaScript coding languages. I picked up these languages during my PhD and managed to write the code for my own website. But if you don't know how to code, that can be a really big barrier for creating a website, either your own or for your business. But that's where Squarespace comes in, who are the sponsor of this week's video. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform that makes it so easy to create a beautiful and professional looking website. With Fluid Engine, which is the next generation website editor from Squarespace, you can customize every design detail with reimagined drag and drop technology for both desktop and mobile. If you've got something to sell, Squarespace makes listing products so easy for you and makes the checkout process completely seamless for your customers with simple but powerful payment tools. I also love how they provide analytics for your website where you can get insights on top traffic sources, understand how your reach is growing, and track those important sales metrics. So if you head to squarespace.com, you can get a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com forward slash Dr. Becky, and you'll get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. So thanks again to Squarespace. And now let's chat about what actually are baryonic acoustic oscillations. Well, baryonic just means normal matter, so not dark matter. Acoustic means sound, and oscillations means waves, pulses, for example. So essentially, sound waves or sound-like waves, like a pressure wave, moving through normal matter in the early universe. But then where did these pressure waves, like sound waves, come from? Well, the early universe was a pretty chaotic place, like no particles were bound in atoms yet, you just had like free floating electrons and protons everywhere with matter pretty evenly distributed. And then you'd have these like little fluctuations that were sort of on a tiny quantum scale that would clump together a few more particles than normal. And then gravity would start to take hold because it was like, oh, there's a more massive bit over here and it would start pulling everything in. And then as the matter got denser and denser, 
you'd have more collisions between all of these particles. And so the matter would get a lot more energy, which meant there was then a force pushing outwards on the gravity trying to pull it in. And so the matter would then expand again, but then it would cool down enough that it was less energetic, that gravity could start to take a hold again, and so on and so on, until you essentially set up these sort of like pulsations of matter in the very early universe. Which would then send out these pressure waves where particles in matter would collide with each other to spread the wave out, just like a sound wave does in air. Eventually, the universe cooled enough that you could then take all those electrons and protons in that plasma and actually bind them together in atoms for the first time. That meant the universe became transparent and the first light in the universe was allowed to free stream, what we call the cosmic microwave background, the first light in the universe. But when atoms formed, the universe could cool much more efficiently. So these oscillations stopped and gravity really started to dominate the evolution of the universe and galaxies started to form but imprinted on that first light in the universe, the cosmic microwave background, is the size of the last baryonic acoustic oscillations that rippled out into the early universe, affecting that distribution of matter and concentrating it along that pressure wave edge at that moment when those first atoms were created. And it's that matter that then went on to form galaxies. And so galaxies were more likely to form where the matter was more concentrated along these edges of the baryonic acoustic oscillations. This is what lets you use BAO to measure the expansion rate of the universe, because these ripples or bubbles are imprinted on the distribution of galaxies around us today. They are a standard ruler because it had the same size everywhere in the universe when the last ripple went through that period at the cosmic microwave background was released. And so if you know what the size was then by looking at the cosmic microwave background, you can then measure it today in the distribution of galaxies and compare how much it's changed because of the universe's expansion. Now, of course, those baryonic acoustic oscillations were, you know, put out in all sorts of directions from all sorts of different parts in the sky. So there will have been a lot of overlap. It's not like you get galaxies in these concentric rings, like in this representative diagram, they are distributed very randomly across the sky. But if you take all the galaxies you've observed and plot the distance between every single galaxy with every other galaxy, and then plot the frequency of what those distances are, you end up with a bump that occurs at the size of the baryonic acoustic oscillation. You get a bump at the size of the bubble. So find that bump and then you know the size of the baryonic acoustic oscillations at that point in the universe's history. And if you can compare that to the size they were when the cosmic microwave background was released, then you can work out how much the universe has expanded in that time. So the DESI collaboration used a couple of different types of galaxies and tracers to find these bumps. Here is that data, all these different stages in the universe's history. So on each of the x-axes here, you've got the distance between galaxies. And on the y-axis, you've got how often that size occurs. Each of the different colors refers to a different type of galaxy or tracer of the BAO that they've used at these different distances from Earth, so different times in the universe's history. From there, they can then measure the size of these BAOs, these bubbles at each of these times in the universe's history, which is then what's plotted here. And you can see how the size of that bubble has changed with time as the universe has expanded. So do their results agree with our best model of the universe? Well, we can see on this same plot that their results are in general agreement with the current best model shown by the straight line there, which takes into account the roles of dark energy and dark matter. And you can see the points don't always agree with the model. I think that's easier to see in this plot where we've got all of this information in one place, right? So on the x-axis, you've got the distance from Earth and therefore the further back in the universe's history that you are. And on the y-axis, you've got the size of the bubble compared to what we expect the size of the bubble to be from our best model of the universe. The inset plots once again show those BAO bumps that were detected. And then from there, they measure the size of the bubble at that time, which is what's plotted in each of those colored data points. 
I quite like that the team also released this version of this plot where they doodled over it to explain to people who weren't as familiar with seeing this type of plot like those astrophysicists are. But hopefully what you can see more clearly here is that the results are in general agreement with that current best model shown by that straight solid line there, which, you know, this is the model that takes into account the effects of dark matter and dark energy in the universe. But you'll notice a few of the points lie below that line, beyond the uncertainties on the measurement too, giving us something slightly different to what our current best model predicts. Now there was a lot of discussion in the paper of what could have caused this, but one possible idea is that perhaps dark energy is varying with time. Dark energy is just the name that we give to the thing that's causing the accelerated rate of expansion of the universe. We don't understand it very well at all. We still don't know what it actually is, but the hope is that these DESI results will help us better understand. Now, these results that we're seeing here are just from the first year of data from DESI, which is actually set to go for five years, making a much more precise map and also one that covers a much larger area of the sky as well. So those differences may or may not go away with more data in the future. You know, the team won't know until the survey has actually taken that data and they can get their hands on it and analyze it and see if that more precise map covering a larger area confirms that result or not. I think it is a really intriguing result from this first year of data and it hints at just maybe something a little bit more exciting to come in terms of new physics and our understanding of dark energy. She had a friend that got married recently and because her last name changed her initials became BAO and I was like oh BAO and of course nobody got it because that acronym means absolutely nothing to all the people that were there and I just looked stupid. <laughs> As baryonic acoustic oscillations, baryonic acoustic oscillations, it's like you want to put it as an extra syllable in there. <laughs>